Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating this 3D text effect in Illustrator. Now I'm using a couple of Design Cuts assets here. The font is the Montana font and the texture itself is from 80 Seamless Hand Drawn Patterns and Textures. So let's swing across to Illustrator here and get started. The document I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels in size, but you can use any size document that you like. I'm going to select the Type tool. I have already selected my Montana font and I have a font size of 300 points, which is a good place to start. I'm going to click in the document and type out ABC in capital letters. If your typeface is too small, just select it and hold the shift key as you drag on a corner handle. That's just going to enlarge it. If you need to adjust the spacing between the characters with your type selected, go to the character dialog and adjust this setting here for tracking. I've got it set to 36, so I have a bit of space between the letters, but you can adjust that using these options here and that will increase or decrease the spacing between your characters. As I said, I've got mine at 36. I think that's going to be a pretty good value for me. Now one tip if you're working in 3D, don't use black type because it's going to be really hard to see your shading. So you want to use a sort of lighter color instead. I'm going to use a blue color, but let's just tone that down a little bit before we start. So with the type selected, you'll choose Effect and then 3D. And we're using Extrude and Bevel. That's the only one of these three options that makes sense to use with type. Now, when you get the 3D Extrude and Bevel Options dialog, yours may not be showing these options here. That's because of this setting here. So you click More Options to see it, fewer options to hide it. For now, hide it because it's just going to get in the way. When you turn Preview on, you'll see the option that is set. And this is just an off-axis front 3D rendering. You can choose different options. So you could choose, for example, off-axis right, and there's off-axis left. There are also some isometric options here. So isometric right and isometric left, top and bottom. You can also just choose front, and then you're looking face on at your type. So you're not effectively seeing anything at all, even though there is an extrusion applied. You can then adjust the X, Y, and Z values yourself. X is going to tip your type over, so it's probably an option that you're less likely to want to use. Y is probably where you're going to get the most value because you're spinning the type. And I like to use a Y value of about 30%. That's probably typically the kind of effect that I'm looking for, but your mileage may differ, so choose whatever makes sense to you. And with Z, you're going to be rotating the text. So I'm just going to set that back to zero and tab out of the way and Illustrator started misbehaving and this happens all the time with this 3D rendering. So if it happens to you, just try something different. Try and make another setting and then go and adjust things back to where you wanted them and that will probably work. But don't get too phased if things go a bit awry in this dialogue, it may do that for you. The extrude depth value is 50 points, and that's this depth here. Typically, you'll probably want to increase that a little bit. So this is at 217. You can see we've got a much deeper extrusion. I did that because I wanted to show you perspective, and without some depth, you're not going to see what perspective does. So let's roll this out to about 30 degrees. And now you'll see your type is actually being rendered in perspective. So the letter A is much bigger than the letter C. If we were to draw lines through these planes here, they would all meet at a point in the distance. I'm going to turn that off because I don't want 3D perspective text. Now again, you can see Illustrator is playing games with me right now. It's left some of this mapping. Just ignore it and hopefully it will just go away in time. I'm going to decrease my extrude depth. I'm going to bring that down to 100. And yes, now Illustrator's had another look at the type and decided that it really did need to make some adjustments. Now I'm not really happy with this white here. I'm going to just increase the extrude depth a little bit to get rid of that. The cap is the face here. And so you can get a hollow cap or a solid cap. Well, 
obviously solid is going to work much better for us and bevel is the shape of this face at the moment I have none so we don't have any dimension around the face of this type there are lots of different bevels that you can use and these will work with varying success on a individual piece of type you'll just need to experiment and see if you can find something that you like or just settle for none which is exactly what I'm going to do here now if you do settle for a different setting I'm just going to go to rounded for a minute you can see that you've got a height option here so you can increase the height of your effect and get a sort of dimensional effect this sort of thing may well happen to you and you may or may not be able to fix it it's not set in concrete that you can fix it we're getting some indication that there might be a problem here because some self intersection may have occurred bringing down the bevel height might help you solve it varying the options that you have selected here might also give you a better effect it's just going to be where the bevel is being applied so experiment with those values if that's a look that you're looking for I'm going back to none now on the surface we've got plastic shading right now there's wireframe there's no shading at all there's diffuse shading and plastic shading and we're working with plastic today I'm going to open up more options because this allows me to control how light is hitting the object now ambient light is a sort of room light so it's a general light and if we reduce that you can see that the only light that we're getting on this subject is this light here this is the light that is lighting our text and if I move it around we're going to get a different effect but typically you'll want some ambient light so I'm just going to crank up ambient light to about 60% somewhere in there and leave it and now we can work with the sort of spotlight if you like that we're working with you can increase the intensity and the size of it so that you get a more intense or less intense effect you can also move this light behind the object and so by selecting the light and clicking on this button here you'll move it behind the object and when you do you're going to get a different lighting effect now I think I can probably light the bottom of this object or the top but it's not going to give me really really good effects here to get the light behind the object so if you need to bring it forward again just select the light source and click to bring it in front you can also add additional light sources by clicking new light and this will give you a second light source so you can add spotlights to things if you want to so you can bring some light in from the bottom for example we could send this one behind as well if you don't want a light source click it and click the delete button this light source is always going to be there you have to have it when you're talking in terms of rendering your shadows the blend steps is going to be important now the font face that I've used is a very straight font face so we're not going to need a lot of blend steps because we don't have a lot of action really the only action that we've got in terms of shading is in this part of the curve on the C everything else is pretty up and down if you need to increase these steps you can do so that's going to give you a lot more faces on your object it's going to give you a bit more smooth shading in terms of this font we don't even need so many blend steps so we could crank that back down to a smaller value should we wish to do so the shading color at the moment it's black if you set it to none this is the effect you're going to get you're going to have a slight bit of color perhaps in your type and you're going to have the shading showing rather than the type itself you can also select the custom value I've got mine set to red for what purpose I'm not quite sure but you can obviously change the color of your shading should you wish to do so I'm going back to black if we're happy with the type as it is now we'll just click OK and that is our basic 3D text effect once you've created your 3D text effect you'll see that anytime you hover over your text you get the original typeface now depending on what you've done to your text this typeface this blue type that we're seeing here may be well away from the actual 3D text and so just be aware of that that things are going to flicker quite a lot now if you look at your type and say you know what I think I could have had a deeper extrusion here's what you're not going to do 
select your type and go to Effect 3D, Extrude and Bevel because that is going to add a second 3D effect. You don't want to add another effect, you just want to change the one that you've already got. So I'm going to cancel out of here, this is not what we want. Instead we're going to the Appearance panel. Now if you don't see your Appearance panel here, you're going to choose Window and then Appearance to look at it. You're going to select your type and you'll see here that there's a 3D extrude and bevel setting. If you click it, you turn it off. This is just an effect like any other effect that you'll see in the effects menu and it's applied the same way. It's a removable and editable effect. And to edit it, you'll just click on it and that just reopens this dialog. Turn preview on because you want to see what you're doing and I'm just going to increase the extrude depth here a little bit and click OK. One of the other things I want to show you about working with an effect like this is what to do if you want to add some pattern to it. Now I don't suggest that you add a pattern to the shading because that's going to be a real nightmare to do. But it is possible to add a pattern or some sort of effect to the face of this text. To do this I'm going to drag out a rectangle because I want to fill it with a pattern. I want my pattern fill to be large enough to place comfortably over my text. It doesn't need to be huge but it will need to cover the text. Individual letters is what we're going to be mapping to. Now I'm going to go and get my pattern and for this I'm going to the swatches panel and I'm just going to open up my user defined swatch library because I've got those 80 hand-drawn textures already saved where I can find them. With my shape selected, I'm just going to experiment with these. I actually really like the dots. I think I'm probably going to use those. So I'll close down this panel, close up my swatches. I've got my dots ready to go on my type. If you want to place a pattern onto your type in this 3D panel, what you need to do is to create this as a symbol. So you go to the Symbols panel. If you don't see your Symbols panel here, go to Window and then Symbols. With your shape filled with your pattern selected, just click on the new icon and then click OK. Select this rectangle so we don't need this any longer and we're just going to delete it. Now we'll go back to our 3D type, select it, go back to the appearance panel and click 3D extrude and bevel because we need to make changes to our type. We're going to apply the pattern to the face of the type. I'll turn preview on so I can see what I'm doing. And this is the option here that lets us do just that. It's called Map Art. I'm going to click on that and you'll see that we have 72 individual faces in this type. So each one of these pieces is going to be a face and they're going to be heaps of faces around here. Well, we need to navigate through these 72 to work out which ones of them, and they're going to be three, control the A and the B and the C, these faces on the letter. And the first one is the one that we want for the letter A. You can see that it's got a red outline around it. Well, that has selected that face. So for the symbols, we're just going to click open and we're going to click on new symbol, the one we had at the very back. So I've now applied my dot pattern to the front face of this letter. I need to move forward and find the one for the letter B. Now if I roughly divide 72 by 3 and then subtract a little bit, I'm going to get somewhere close to the letter B. So I'm thinking I'm going to type in about 22 here and just see where that takes us. Well, I'm seeing the red highlighting here around the letter B. That tells me I need to go back a bit. I've gone a little bit too far. Here is the back end of the letter B and here is the front face of the letter B. So let's go and select new symbol and let's progress forward. I'm thinking that the letter C is probably going to start around about 50. Let's see where we are. I'm not seeing anything highlighted right now, so let's keep moving forward. Well, we're already in the letter C here, so let's go backwards a bit until we pick up the front face of the letter C, which is this piece here, and we're going to apply the symbol to it. This is a bit of a sort of hunt and peck routine. You just have to keep progressing through until you find the face that you want. I'll click OK. And now that I've finished, I'll click OK again. 
So now we have our typeface with not only the 3D effect applied to it, but also a pattern mapped to it. Now you probably want to make sure that your 3D effect looks the way that you want it to look before you start adding a pattern to it. Because again, Illustrator may well struggle with this a little bit and you may not be able to make changes to it effectively once you've applied the pattern to it. In this case, I'm just gonna make a duplicate just in case the wheels fall off when I go to edit edit this. I've selected my type, click on 3D Extrude and Bevel, turn Preview on and I'm thinking that I want a little bit of dimension in this. Now it's all holding together pretty well. That sometimes might be a little bit surprising. Right now I'm just going to take this and click OK. But it would have been better had I would made that adjustment before I put the pattern on because you can't always guarantee that it's going to work perfectly. Now if you ever want to bake this 3D effect into your type, this is what you're going to do. Select over the type and you'll choose object and then expand appearance. And that expands it into its component parts. If we go to the layers palette, we'll see what we've got. I'm going to turn off and lock down the one that still has the 3D effect applied to it. This is the expanded version. You'll have a group for the letters A, B and C and within that group are going to be subgroups. You'll have the face of the letter A with its pattern applied to it and then these are going to be the shading elements, all the elements that Illustrator has created to shade all of the faces in your type. You're going to have exactly the same for the letter B and the letter C. Now I deliberately chose the font Montana, this regular font for this 3D effect. The reason for that is that the shadowing is going to be quite smooth if you choose a fairly regular font. You may already see that some of the shadowing is starting to break up on this typeface as it has been rotated. But let's have a look at another one of the Montana fonts. This one is called Montana Rough. And you can see that the shadow effect has broken up on this typeface. And the rougher the edge of your typeface, the worse this 3D shading effect is going to be. So you probably want to approach a rough font like this with a little bit of trepidation. Don't expect miracles from the 3D effect. It won't give you miracles, but it might give you what you want. But be aware that a sort of rough edge typeface is going to be prone to having shading missing out on it. You're going to get better results every time if you use a smooth edge typeface. So those are the basics of creating 3D text effects in Illustrator. It's certainly much easier than Photoshop, although it's not a perfect tool. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.